Alright guys, here's a little tutorial on how to set up the graphic user interface of essentially any AND miner. This is going to work with your all your S series, S5, S7, S9, your T9, and your R4. So I recommend for Windows downloading IP Scanner. I do not have a Mac, but they essentially have the same thing if you just search IP Scanner Mac. So I have it right here. It's called Advanced IP Scanner. I will put a link to that on the page. You go ahead and open IP Scanner, and this is essentially going to scan your entire network for all of the connections, whether they be wireless or hardline. So you just click Scan, wait for the results to come in. So it's just finding everything, all the computers hooked to the network. If you have phones, they will show up, wireless devices, tablets, things of that nature. As you can see, I have a lot of them. Um, you can click on any of them, and essentially they're just going to show up like this guy I have highlighted. is just an IP address. You're not going to know what it is, but you're going to look for one that has the little arrow next to it, such as these and that shows you that you can log into it. And I already did my homework, so I already know which IP I'm looking for. I'm looking for the 192.168.1.13. This is the ant miner we just set up. When I open this, it typically would ask for a password and a username, and those are both root, R-O-O-T. I actually already logged in and it saved the password so it will not ask me for it. So this brings up the amp miner that I just set up. It shows you at the top we have an amp miner R4 running. It shows you what its system is or essentially the firmware that it's running. It's been up for five minutes but the load averages it is not working right now. So to the right of the system page, you click on Minor Configuration. And this is the standard configuration that is going to show up by default settings. And this is not what you want if you want money to be going to you. So I have Ant Pool open. I'm just using that for ease um, and simplicity because these are Bitmain products. I figured, you know, the first place you would go to is Ant Pool. So you just scroll up there and you have your amp pool. You will need to click on the little icon and register an account with your email address and pick a username and enter your wallet information. I have already done that to save time, but that is how you get your actual mining name for amp pool and that is uh, what your worker name is going to be. And down below it, you can see it has all this information down here in the bottom right hand corner. It says Stratum Server. It's not letting me highlight all these guys, but these are where the work from your miner goes. So this are, these are the stratums we will be pointing the miners to work. These are the guys, each one of these is a backup pool in case one of them goes down. If you wish to use, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Kano at Kano.is. They also, down at the bottom here, have their stratums listed. Again, you would need to log in and put your worker address. Uh, there's definitely instructions on how to do that. If you're a fan of the slush pool, same thing. You're going to sign up a new account, but let's just stick with Amp Pool just to keep things simple. So I have copy and pasted the stratum. So we will go into the Ant Miner and I just paste the stratum. That is what we want. We do not want to be solo block mining. And then I'm going to move down to the worker name and I just created a random worker. This is just going to be mining peon. I just made a new one. Password, you don't need it. I just get rid of it. The next stratum I know is 443. Enter the same information of the random fake worker. I guess it's not fake because I already created an account. And then the last stratum, the 
is 2, 5. We also enter the information and don't need the password. You can also enter different pools. I typically have the first pool, this guy running to amp pool, and then the second guy, I will set it to another pool in case amp pool goes down. And then the third guy will alternatively be on another pool in case that goes down. So now you go to the bottom right hand corner and click save and apply. So I put mining P on, that is the username that I just registered with amp pool. And then the dot and the one signifies the worker. So this essentially is mining peons first worker. So now I will go back to system and after hitting save and apply, that has reboot the miner and told it to be working for that stratum using mining peon as the worker name. We'll go back into it and it takes a minute for the miner to reboot and get to the pool. So there are some other interesting things in here in the overview. There's administration, if you want to set passwords. The monitor is basically a ton of code. You guys probably won't understand it, but it's basically what the miner's doing. The kernel log is essentially what is happening inside the miner, all the controls. This can be useful if you have problems because you can copy and paste this information and send it to Bitmain warranty in case there's something is wrong with your miner. Upgrade is something that I would not mess around with. This is how you change the firmware. Unless you know what you're doing, I would stay away from this page. And then finally, you have reboot, and it just reboots the system of your operating device. We will go back into the system page. And it is our general overview. And we are still waiting for this right here, the Bitmain Miner version. That's the firmware. We're just waiting for that to come online. If we click on Miner Status, it shows us that the current miner settings, nothing is happening. The miner is not working. So we are still in a holding pattern. I will just refresh. waiting for something awesome to happen. I usually, I usually just plug it in and wait. That's probably going to go better for you guys in terms of uh, can't make it go any faster than it wants to go. Another telltale sign is right here. It says socket connect failed, connection refused, and that essentially means we have not been connected to the network. You can click on network and then diagnostics, and you can ping the Bitman network to make sure your internet is active. So essentially it has showed us that it is getting to the Bitmain site, no problems. So we are connected, we're just waiting on the miner. One of the reasons we're waiting a long time is the new firmware has an auto frequency system which essentially measures the outside air temperature coming into the miner and then it will set the hashing boards at the appropriate frequency for the temperature. So it's, if it's very cold, you will get a higher frequency which means it will work harder because it doesn't need to cool as much. If it is extremely hot, it will put a lower frequency allowing the hashing chips to work at a lower rate without overheating. And we are still waiting. Oh, we are still waiting. I can hear my miner spooling up, so we should be pretty good. 
All right, so we are in. You have noticed that we are now showing a hardware version instead of the socket connect fail, and we also have a firmware version. So in minor configuration, our settings have been accepted, and we click on minor status, and we are in. It shows that we have been up for 22 seconds. It's hashing at 11.3. It says gigahertz, but it's really terahertz. I am not sure why that is, but um, it's just going really fast because it uh, is auto frequency tuning. As we refresh it, you can see that it will go back down. Mine is only uh, in 8.0, typically tends to hash a little bit above normal. So you can see right here, my first pool is alive. That is where we're sending our information. It shows the difficulty of the pool, the work that we do, the accepted shares, and the difficulty again. And then it shows the hashing boards in an ant miner are four. There are only two. These O's represent each chip on the board. And when they are a circle like this, that means they are working. If you see X's there, that means the chips have had a problem. So uh, typically a reboot is in order, and if not, then warranty is in order. So essentially, that's everything. You got it right there. This miner is set up, and we click on miner configuration, and it is mining to the name that we just created. And the miner status shows that the miner is hashing at the appropriate speed, and it is going to the right pool under the right name. So that should do the trick right about there. If you have any other questions, just send them my way and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for checking out the video.